Okay, and here's the board after deployment. Talk us through what you got, Dan. So, Order of the Brotherhood. Uh, here we've got Knights of Redemption with Crushing. Yeah. Uh, behind them we have uh, the Order of the Forsaken, which is just a regiment. Uh, then we have uh, Villain Initiates. The Regiment of? Regiment. Yeah. And your uh, middle? In the middle here we have Order of the Forsaken of Horde. Dirty, with, dirty uh, Horde. Blessing of the Gods. Forgot to mention that these have Kappa Holy Hand Grenades. Oh, okay, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, then, Some uh, grenade fun. Horde of Martyrs. Uh, standard yeah. as they come. Fearless 22 uh, plus. Buffing of Villain. Uh, <sighs> so, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we also have then Order of the Brotherhood on Foot, which is a regiment. Uh, this guy is a student with a loot of Insatiable Darkness to give uh, the buffing of um, uh, Bane Chant. Yeah, Bane Chant. Troop of Martyrs, standard as they come. Uh, Order of the Brotherhood mm, Cav. Lovely painted cavalry regiment there. Yes. So okay, still on, not finished, but. On your, on your left flank. Forsaken Beast with Ensnare. Okay. And then my general, which is the exemplar, Forsaker. But no general. No general. Just, he's lost his he's, weapon, is he? He's run away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right then, and then for the goblins, we've got 2,000 points of goblins allied in with some orcs on the, what would be the goblin right flank. We've got a regiment of flea bags, uh, speed 10 nimble. Woo -hoo. These guys have Helm of the Ram to give them thunderous two. Coming towards the centre, we've got a horde of trolls, as is, a war trombone, a giant, another horde of trolls, another giant, a uh, whiz there, he's got bane chant and inspiring. Oh, that reminds me, the little wizard in the forest over there. This guy's actually got the upgrades for lightning bolt 5. Amulet. Uh, amulet, is it? Yeah. yeah, amulet. Okay, so back then we have... Here we got Opposing the knights after deployment, we have a goblin uh, spear horde. Sorry, not the horde. They, I've split them into two regiments for this game. I normally run them as a horde. This game, they're two regiments. Behind them, another war trombone. And a allied in unit of Moraxes, a regiment of Moraxes. A orc hero, I think he's called a crudger. And he's on the boar. He's also had the upgrade for plus one attacks. And then a regiment of orc gore riders. Now Dan has been very generous with this list. I've allied in uh, about 600 points worth of orcs here. So it's a, it is an illegal list by about 100 points because obviously it's over the 25% cap. But I'd only just base these guys and I wanted to try them out. And Dan's been very generous. So we've rolled for first turn. Goblins uh, won the roll so we might go first. And then I'll catch you after two. Okay guys, so here's just a quick overview of the board before we start the game. Um, at the end of deployment, I'm just going to give you a quick kind of rundown of what's going through my head um, after deployment. Now, I had 15 drops going into this and my opponent only had 9. So I was always going to come out relatively well or after deployment. But I particularly like how this has turned out. If you have a look at the left flank, he's got two units of cav and a unit of his uh, flying cav on his right flank and I've got my phalanx chaff there and they've got to come down that narrow corridor in between woods and an impassable building. So that's gonna cause serious problems for him, which is very good for me. If anything, my left flank is a little overloaded, but my thoughts there is that I but I want the Gore Rider Regiment and the Moraxes to both benefit from inspiring with a general. So I wanted to keep them together. That's all that is. Uh, I've got my two troll hordes and two giants to really hold up the center with a lot of crushing strength there. So that should be able to like break through his fearless stuff. Um, you know he's got he's got he's got fearless uh, hordes in the middle, which is quite annoying to deal with. And then I've got on my right flank my unit of um, flea bag riders, which are very fast and nimble, so they're very effective at flanking. So that's pretty much my tactics going into the game. Let's see how it pans out. So just a general advance up the board, really, making sure to stay out of uh, charge range of everything, obviously. Uh, same in the middle here, making sure to stay out of the charge range of those flyers. 
And then on the right flank, I've just made a slight advance up and a pivot with my flea bag cavalry. I don't want to put them all the way up the board because they'll just get charged by his um, his griffin and his uh, forsaken beast. Uh, and I don't really want to suicide them, so I'm just going to keep them there and see what happens. In the shooting phase, my wizard with the lightning bolt 5 puts two wounds on this little troop of uh, martyrs. These guys are fearless. Tw 3 plus 11, and then they get rallying 2 from the 2 units of Brotherhood. So an 80 point unit of chaff with Fearless 13 is a bit of a pain to deal with really, so let's get a shoot in them. So the Forsaken Knights what were behind, move uh, over and across onto the right hand side. A general advance straight up the middle from all the units in the centre. And on the left flank, the Forsaken Beast has moved up, um, but the General has stayed where he is. I think my opponent's thinking behind this was he could take a charge from the flea bags into the Forsaken Beast, but he didn't want to take one onto his General, so the General has just stayed back. And with no shooting or spell casting of any kind from my opponent's Brotherhood, it's straight on to Goblin turn 2. So the left flank moves up, pretty much staying in the same formation. With the Gore Riders there in the woods, obviously putting cavalry into woods isn't ideal, but I feel like I've got, you know, more numbers on the left, so I should be okay with them losing Thunderous. I mean, if they get charged, they obviously it's a hindered charge, so with Inspiring there, they should be able to hold up to that anyway. So I'm okay with them being in the woods. In the center, just a general move up. The uh, trolls on the right hand side have pivoted out slightly just in case the, uh, the flanking side of the Brotherhood comes around. And the giant on the left has kind of pivoted over because, you know, just to free up a little bit more space, I didn't want to run him down that tiny narrow channel. So he's obviously got height advantage over the trolls, so any charging shouldn't be an issue even when he's behind them. With the flea bag riders on the right hand flank, I resist the urge to charge up here. I think if I charge up into that forsaken beast, then yeah, I'd put some wounds on him, but then they get double charged in the next turn and his whole left flank just reforms, ready to collapse on me. So charging here, although tempting, probably a really bad idea. So they just kind of shift around there and just stay where they are you know, still projecting that 20 inch threat range. In the shooting phase, the flag get with Loot of Insatiable Darkness fails to bane chant the War Trombone, but it doesn't matter. Ian loads on the troop of martyrs and puts five wounds on them anyway. Then the wizard in the woods with five lightning bolts puts another two wounds on the martyrs and puts them up to seven plus the two from previous, and on 11 they break. First blood to the goblins. Woohoo! And then the wizard on the left-hand flank puts one wound onto the Forsaken with a lightning bolt. And on a double six, they are wavered. This is a good start for the goblins. Brotherhood turn two, and it's all kicking off. The uh, Order of the Forsaken, with their head strong, do get their 4+, plus and they manage to shake off their wavering annoyingly. And then uh, perform a double charge, along with the Order of Redemption, both into the Gore Riders. Obviously it's a hindered charge on both of them, so they are losing their Thunderous, so let's see if those Gore Riders can hold. And then the Villain Initiates, they charge into that unit of... Goblin Spears on the right hand side. Now forgetting about my Goblin Wizard last turn because he's hiding behind that tree, I accidentally left him in charge range of that Forsaken Beast. So hmm, he is in the woods so it is a hindered charge again but oh, that's not looking good. Now I forgot to take a photo of the centre of the board here but no charges were declared by the Brotherhood anyway so it looks pretty much the same as it did before. So let's see how the combat's worked out. 
the Order of Redemption and the Order of Forsaken, despite having minus one to hit and no thunderous, put seven wounds onto the Gore Riders, which is uh, way above average, but not enough to break them. It is, however, enough to waver them, so the Gore Riders are sitting in the woods and are wavered. The Valean Initiates, however, totally fluff their attacks and managed to only put one wound on the Goblin Spears, and it's not enough to even waver them. And following the shocking example set by his uh, initiate comrades, the Forsaken Beast, despite having eight attacks and wounding on twos, manages to put just one wound on the Goblin Wizard. But despite only taking one wound, he is a Goblin after all, so can be wavered on an eight plus, and no. Doesn't even get that. So the goblin laughs in his face. <laughs> goblin turn three, and this is what the center of the board looks like. Sorry for the rubbish photo. But the giant, a horde of trolls, and the other giant have all three of them charged into the horde of martyrs. And then the troll unit on the right hand side have charged into the order of brotherhood. And then the war trombone has come over on the right hand side to try and get a shot off at the knights. On the left hand flank, the goblin regiment, the goblin uh, sharpsticks have counter charged back into the knights. The other goblin sharpsticks have got a flank charge onto the order of redemption. The Gore Riders, obviously, they're wavered, they're sitting there doing nothing, and uh, you can see him just behind the tree. The Orc Crudger has charged uh, into the front of the Order of Redemption. The Morakers are kind of bottlenecked in, so they're just sitting at the back waiting for their chance to do something, and the War Trombone hasn't got a target to shoot at, so that's what the left side of the flank is looking like. The flea bag riders on the right flank. Oh, I don't really know what to do with these guys. Again, I don't really want to just march them up and suicide them against the uh, exemplar forsaker on the griffin. So I decided to just pivot them around and put them into the woods to kind of support the mage and tie up the uh, forsaken beast as well. So let's see how that goes. So combat the orc crudger and the sharp sticks. Um, after getting Bane chanted in, in uh, the shooting phase as well, managed to put seven wounds on the Order of Redemption. But these guys are like 15, 17 with Inspiring, so they hold, they're absolutely fine. And the goblins, uh, the sharp sticks right next to them, managed to just put the one wound on the Initiate's Cavalry, which is about what you can expect from them, really. <laughs> In the centre, the Troll Horde and the two Giants managed to put 14 wounds on the Horde of Martyrs, which is not enough to even waver them. These guys are like Fearless 23, I think, by the time they've got all their buffs. And, uh, ah, yeah, that tar pit's kind of holding me back. Uh, it's worth noting, by the way, uh, one, sorry for the appalling quality of photo, and two, obviously the Giants are both in combat, but the way the models are, I just couldn't, you know, squeeze the models in there, so they're left like that. The other horde of trolls, though, after getting Bane chanted in the shooting phase by the uh, flag gate with loot, they absolutely go to town on the Brotherhood on foot, put eight wounds on them, and despite them being inspired, manage to rout them in in a one -er, which is just brilliant. <laughs> um, the war trombone behind them in the shooting phase, it opened up on the knights, uh, but I only did one wound. And that's what the middle of the board looks like after the trolls reformed. Brotherhood turn three. So the Forsaken Knights fly over the top of the combat out of the woods and then pivot to face uh, the Moraxes. The Order of Redemption have countercharged the Gore Riders and the Initiate Knights have countercharged the Sharpsticks. That's what's happening on the left. In the center, the Horde of Martyrs have decided to countercharge the Trolls, so it doesn't look it, but the two Giants aren't in combat, they've decided to charge the Trolls. The, uh, the Horde of Forsaken have just flown right up and over the top. Uh, I think turn three 
my opponent decided he he needs to get his uh you know flyers more into the game and needs to make them effective with some flank and rear charges so that's why he's just popped his two flying units over the top and then the order of brotherhood which are the blue and uh, red knights on the right hand side they have charged the trolls straight in the front and on the right hand flank the forsaken beast has charged my fleabag riders uh, that's about it for all the charges. Let's see how the combat gets on. So the Redemption Knights, despite regenerating two wounds on the counter charge, managed to do absolutely no wounds to the Gore Riders. Yes, they lose their Thunderous, but still, <laughs> they should have done something. So they're in trouble. The Initiates do a lot better, putting four wounds on the Sharp Sticks. Sorry, three wounds. Um, so they're on four wounds left, but it's still not enough to break them. And the Martyr Horde in the center put four wounds on the Trolls. And again, it's not enough to break them. The Order of the Brotherhood managed to do a lot better, though. After getting Bane Chanted by the Exemplar uh, in the previous phase, they managed to put seven wounds on the trolls um, and due to their inspiring it's only enough to waver them the forsaken beast however um, eight attacks wounding on twos only gets two wounds on the flea bag riders but it doesn't matter because a really good nerve roll and they are wavered so that's the end of Brotherhood turn 3, and things are looking good for the goblins here. Uh, end of 3 turns, and the goblins are yet to sustain a single casualty. We have got 2 units wavering though, and uh, I've played this Brotherhood list a few times, and I can say never count them out. Lots of flyers and knights, they, they, it's not over till the fat lady sings with these guys, so let's see how the goblins come in turn 4. So this is the left hand side of the board. As you can see, the Gore Riders went back into the uh, Knights of Redemption along with the Sharp Sticks and the Moraxes even found a bit of room for the charge there. And there was a lot of attacks and they just absolutely annihilated the Knights and the three of them reformed. On the bottom left hand side of the screen there, you can kind of see the Crudger on the boar. Um, when the Forsaken flew over the top, obviously, I think my opponent failed to realise that he was an individual, so he can just pivot and get line of sight on the charge. So he's charged into the flank of the Forsaken Knights. It's not a flank charge, obviously, because he's an individual, but he still gets the charge in. And then on the right-hand side, the Sharp Sticks have gone back into the Knights, and I think they did another two wounds, but it still wasn't enough to even waver them. And here's the centre of the board. Now, during the movement phase, I pivoted both the war trombones backwards to face the uh, Forsaken Knights that have flown over the top, and I moved the wizard in on the right-hand side as well. And despite trying to bane chant each war trombone and failing both times, I still managed to put nine wounds on the Forsaken Knights with the two war trombones and the lightning bolts from the wizard. And nine wounds and a nerve roll of ten was enough to pop them in a one -er. And this is just devastating for my opponent, but this is exactly what I wanted. I thought my war trombones were pretty much the only answer to the flying cavalry. By keeping them with my line and, and behind them, anything that flew over the top, I knew that I could just unload breath attacks on them. So that's exactly what I was waiting to happen, and that's what did happen. After that, the two giants and the Horde of Trolls uh, charge back into the Horde of Martyrs, and the Horde of Trolls on the right-hand side, uh, they can't do anything because they're wavered, but they do regenerate a couple of wounds. It is, however, elation to devastation, because immediately after popping the Forsaken Knights, uh, I put 15 wounds, I think they were the... Horde of Mars regenerated a couple, so they're, I think, down to 11, and I put them back onto 26 wounds, and then roll double one. Ah, oh, damn, this is a right spanner in the works. I've got a horde of trolls and two giants held up in the middle of the board by this unit, and I really needed them gone. That has, uh, that's hurt. That hurts a lot. <laughs> but, you know, it happens. 
it happens. That's Kings of War. If you don't like rolling double ones, don't play Kings of War. <laughs> so this is the board state at the end of Goblin Turn 4. And looking very good for the Goblins. I've got to be honest, I we yet to suffer a single casualty. As you can see, my opponent's casualties are there on the right-hand side. Um, the unit of Fleabag Riders, they were wavered. It couldn't do anything with those, so they're, they're going to be gone. And... Uh, that unit of Mars is really holding things up in the middle, so that's very frustrating. But we'll see if the Brotherhood can turn it around. So, Brotherhood turn four, and the Forsaken Knights have charged into the back of the War Trombone. I don't think that'll last. They get triple attacks. Uh, that thing's gone. And just above that, the uh, Initiate Cavalry have gone back into the Goblin Sharpsticks. In the centre of the board, the Horde of Martyrs have gone back into the Trolls. The uh, Brotherhood Knights have gone back into their Trolls. The um, Exemplar on the Griffin has charged from the right hand side, gone into the War Trombone, bit of revenge for the damage they unleashed on the Forsaken Knights, and then on the bottom right hand side of the screen there you can see that the Forsaken Beast has charged back into the uh, Fleet Bag Riders. And on to the combat phase, and the Knights of the Forsaken, despite having 27 attacks and putting 8 wounds on the War Trombone, you guessed it, double ones. Ah, oh, this is devastating for the Brotherhood here. <laughs> oh, it feels bad, man. And the same goes for the Initiates. Despite doing 4 wounds, which is the same as they did in the last 2 phases, they're an 8 isn't enough to even waver the goblins uh, a really poor nerve roll they do have inspiring but a really poor nerve roll and these goblins aren't even wavered it does get better though because in the center of the board the horde of martyrs do manage to put another three wounds on the trolls and seven wounds on them is enough to waver them so those trolls aren't going anywhere and the Brotherhood Knights, after getting Bane chanted by the loot, go to town on the Trolls again and put 13 wounds on them, and they rout them. The uh, Exemplar on the Griffin, triple attacks on the War Machine, and it routes that too. And the Forsaken Beast puts another 3 wounds on the Fleabag Riders, putting them up to 5, and that is enough to rout them too. So a good turn for the Brotherhood there, taking a Regiment of Cavalry, a tr Horde of Trolls, a War Trombone, and wavering the other Horde of Trolls. Um, as you can see, the Knights in the centre, they've reformed to face towards the Giant. And yeah, looks like the Brotherhood are pulling it back here. So Goblin turn 5, and on the left, the Moraxes have charged into the back of the Forsaken Knights. The uh, Crudger on a boar right at the bottom there has just legged it right across to try and get into the middle. The Sharp Sticks have counter-charged back into the uh, Initiate Knights. The Gore Riders have charged into the flank of the Initiate Knights, and the Gobbler, the other regiment of Sharp Sticks have just moved out the way up the top of the screen there. And in the centre, the trolls do nothing, they're wavered, and both giants charge back into the Horde of Martyrs. And after combat, you can see the initiates have been routed, no surprise there, a Bane Chant was cast on the Gore Riders just to make sure the job was a good one, and triple attacks from the Moraxes in the rear of the Forsaken, 75 attacks for Crushing Strength 1, they were never going to survive that, so they have just advanced forward just behind the Crudger. So that's what the left flank's looking like. And this is in the middle. The martyrs are finally gone. They were on like 26 wounds anyway, so all they had to do was do a wound and make them check. And they routed. So both the giants have reformed to face towards the knights. Uh, the trolls, however, can't reform because uh, they weren't involved in the combat, so they just got to sit there. Uh, they did actually manage to regenerate. I think it was two wounds, though. Um, but that's the end of Goblin Turn 5.
So Brotherhood turn 5 and the Forsaker on the Griffin gets a flank charge into the side of the Trolls and the uh, Brotherhood Knights charge into the Giant. That's not actually a rear charge, it's a front charge, we just moved the model around because it wouldn't fit otherwise. So here's what it's looking like after combat. Uh, a flank charge into the Trolls by the uh, Forsaker on the Griffin was more than enough to see them off despite inspiring. And the Brotherhood, uh, after getting Bane chanted by Loot of Darkness, managed to put nine wounds on the Giant. I know the Dicey Seven is actually nine, but even despite having nine wounds on him, it wasn't enough to pop him. So that, oh, and the uh, Forsaker Beast, which I don't have a photo of off screen, has made its way towards the middle of the board. And that's the end of the Brotherhood turn. So this is an overview of the board at the end of Goblin Movement. Uh, at the bottom of the screen there, the Moraxes have just moved up to try and get across. The, uh, the Gore Riders have moved across on the top there. Uh, both the regiments of Sharp Sticks, uh, they're not going to make it anywhere this game. So they'll just chill out and stay where they were. The uh, Orc Crudger uh, did actually have the range to get the charge in. So he's charged into the... Uh, Exemplar Forsaker on the Griffin. The giant is charged into the Exemplar Forsaker, and the other giant has countercharged the unit of Brotherhood. The um, War Trombone there and the Wizard have just moved into range to make some shooting attacks against the Forsaken Beast. So after combat, the giant and the Crudger uh, managed to put seven wounds on the uh, Exemplar Forsaker, but he doesn't waver or reason routed, he stays strong, and the giant only puts four wounds on the knights. And that is the end of Goblin turn six. So Brotherhood turn six, and as you can see some quite ineffective shooting from the goblins, has only put two wounds on that Forsaken Beast last turn. So he charges into the war trombone, uh, just picking up points really, he's already sitting on 8 so he's almost guaranteed to pop. The Brotherhood Knights have charged into the Giant and the uh, Exemplar Forsaker on the Griffin has charged into the uh, Crudger on the Boar. So this is the uh, overview of the board at the end of Brotherhood Turn 6. As you can see the uh, Forsaken Beast did kill the War Trombone, no surprises there. And the unit of Brotherhood Knights did actually manage to rout the Giant. The uh, Orc Crudger, though, on board is still sitting strong. And at this point, my, we decide to see if we get another turn. My opponent rolls, and we do. We get a 4+, plus and at that point, Brotherhood concede. Um, the Gore Riders would have charged into the Brotherhood Knights. The Moraxes would have charged into the Saken. So I think another turn for the Goblins would have just pretty much tabled the Brotherhood. So there we go guys, a uh, pretty convincing win by the Goblins there, um, I think 500 points was the margin, which is more than enough to secure the victory. Um, I think deployment is what won it for me there, I think the, w the way the game panned out, um, the Brotherhood really struggled to utilise a lot of their thunderous charge and their high mobility and their cavalry and their flyers, which if they can get that going becomes very difficult to deal with. Um, again, I kind of suffered with an issue of getting a lot of units wavered around like turn 3 and 4 and 5 where it really matters. This is just something I think as a goblin player you've just got to accept. Um, you don't pay a lot of points for your units and you do have um, low, no, low wavering nerves. And obviously taking more inspiring doesn't help because you can't re-roll a waver check. So, um, I mean, both troll hordes got wavered, my unit of... Uh, Fleabag Riders got wavered, uh, even the Hawks got wavered. It's just, you know, part and parcel of being a Goblin player. Um, and it does mean that games that you think are in the bag can suddenly turn around on you. Uh, I've had it happen before. Luckily, it didn't happen in this game. Although, when I saw the double ones on the uh, on the Horde of Martyrs, I was panicking a little bit. But luckily, we were able to overcome that. And my MVP award goes to the War Trombones. Yeah, no surprises there. The one in the centre managing to pop the Brotherhood on foot with five wounds was uh, pretty brilliant. And then between them managing to rout the unit of Forsaken Knights, the horde of Forsaken Knights that flew over the top. Um, and then as if that wasn't enough, the icing on the cake, <laughs> one of them holds to a charge from the Forsaken Knights. Um, 
even though he took eight wounds. <laughs> what more can you ask for for 65 points each? <laughs> so that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one.